Hello, Manila Bearcat super fans, and possibly students from elsewhere also. Welcome to this lesson on simple harmonic motion. I can think of several things that I find more fascinating than simple harmonic motion, but we're going to do the best we can to make this simple. Wow! Here we go. If something's oscillating, it's just going back and forth. And there's several examples. You get your traditional swinging pendulum. Speakers, actually are oscillating back and forth quicker than your eye can discern. You've got your common water waves, springs do all sorts of bouncing around, and light waves are actually, uh, you can think of as an electromagnetic field that is oscillating. With simple harmonic motion, there are some simple terms that you might be familiar with already, like displacement and amplitude. So let's say we've got this oscillator like a weight on a spring that's going doing, 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 and bouncing around, the displacement is going to be measured from a zero point, where it's at equilibrium, to some distance above or some distance below. And the definition that you have to memorize, you might want to write down and pause it, is distance from where it's at rest to the distance to where it's actually at. Now the amplitude, write this down as well, is that maximum distance. So our amplitude here is going to be this distance right there. A few other terms. You've got this oscillator bouncing around again. To help describe it, you could list the period. You may want to pause and write this one down. But essentially, it's going to be the time that it takes to go from, let's say it's up top, down to the bottom, and then back up to where it came from. We're going to be measuring that in probably 0.5 seconds, 0.8 seconds, depends on the oscillator. Now also, you will want to write down what the frequency is. Now, period, we usually use a capital T. And this is going to be in the units of seconds. Frequency, we use the small f. And this is going to be in the units of hertz. The relationship between them is pretty simple, because frequency is going to be the inverse of period, or periods the inverse of frequency. Uh, a hertz is equal to 1 over seconds. So if you have a period of half a second, 1 over 0 0.5 would give you a frequency of 2 hertz. Now, for phase difference, let's say you've got two harmonic oscillators. If they're oscillating together, you have a phase difference of 0. But maybe one's up here, while one's down here, and they're off by this. We say that phase difference is 180 degrees. If they were offset by an entire cycle, that would be 360 degrees. You can express it in degrees, as we did here, or in radians, where 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Many things will oscillate, but to be defined as true simple harmonic motion has uh, some pretty strict requirements. So let's say that we've got uh, the little weight on a spring and it's bouncing around doing 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 for it to be a true oscillator we have to say that its acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x where this is a constant don't worry about omega but x is displacement so a is going to be proportional to x with a negative sign which means as it's up here in positive displacement land the acceleration is negative down towards the center and when it's down here in the negative area, its acceleration is upwards because down here, the strength or tension of the spring is stronger than gravity and it's being pulled back up. When it's up in the positive, gravity is quite strong, tension on the spring is quite weak, and so it's being pulled downwards. And since it is a proportional relationship, it goes through the origin and is linear, much like this. Now you might be wondering, well, what is that crazy omega situation? Well, that omega situation is going to be the angular velocity. Just the name of the term, angular velocity. And that's going to be negative 2 pi over the period. So that's going to be in the units of 1 over seconds, which is also the units of hertz, or frequency. And so another way of writing this is, sorry, that negative sign is not there. Another way of writing this is 2 pi f. 
Now, if you have omega squared, clearly you'll end up with something like 4 pi squared frequency scale. Here's a short problem on simple harmonic motion. Pause it and see if you can solve parts A and B. We can answer part A based on what you just saw a few seconds ago in that this is a linear uh, situation going through the origin. Since it's both linear and through the origin, then acceleration must be proportional to the negative value of x. Or in other words, it's always accelerating towards the origin. When its displacement is positive, the acceleration is negative. And when the displacement is negative over here, the acceleration is positive. Try part B. You might be thinking, how in the world do I find period and frequency from a graph that does not have time on it? But what you can exploit, we are all about exploiting, is that this fact is true. And from this graph, we can say that the slope is going to equal to omega squared. Now, find the slope, see what you can do. Now your slope, hopefully you use your good old friend rise over run, and with your rise, you should have gotten a 1.5 meters per second squared. The run, 0.06, because I converted these centimeters into meters to match the units on top. And I'm going to get a slope of 25. If you square root both sides, you will get 5 over second squared, which is the same as 5 uh, hertz. Sorry, not squared. Just regular hertz. And then you can figure out your frequency by saying that this is equal to 2 pi f, and so 5 is equal to your 2 pi times the frequency. You then end up with a frequency when you solve that of about 0 0.80 hertz. That's one answer. To get the period from that, it's quite easy. You invert the frequency, so you've got 1 over 0 0.8, and you should get something like 1.8 three or 1.2 seconds, depending on how you round. That's it.